The Wicomico County couple accused of running a puppy mill on their property in Eden, Maryland, are now facing a total of 168 charges of animal cruelty. Sheriff's deputies served their arrest warrant this morning. 47 ABC's Emily Lampa has been, been reporting live from the sheriff's office since the story broke. She joins us in the studio now. Emily, what is the latest? Well, David, at last check, we are told that Susan and Robert Murphy are still in custody. 47 ABC was there earlier today when deputies transported the couple from the sheriff's office to the Wicomico County Detention Center. It was just about three months ago when hundreds of dogs were rescued from their property in Eden. And since that day in April, the sheriff's office, animal control, and the state's attorney's office has been working hard collecting evidence. And investigators believe they have a strong case against the Murphys. But a warning, before we take a look at some of those details outlined in the documents, they might be difficult to hear for some of our viewers. These are the images painfully burned into the hearts and minds of animal lovers here on Delmarva. Pomeranians being cleaned and nursed back to health. Hundreds rescued from this property in Eden. Up until now, few other details were known about what inspectors found at the home of Robert and Susan Murphy. But now that the couple has been arrested, these charging documents are now public record outlining in graphic detail the squalor these dogs were allegedly forced to live in. It was on April 6, 2016, that the Wicomico County Sheriff's Office sent one of their deputies to assist Wicomico Animal Control in a kennel inspection at 5084 Cooper Road in Eden. The welfare check, the result of a tip that there was a large number of dogs on the property. According to the investigating officer, Susan Murphy answered the door and told the corporal that her husband had been taking care of the dogs, which were spread out between the home and three outbuildings. Susan allegedly told the investigator she did not know what the conditions were in those buildings, and she was afraid it was not going to be good. The corporal stated the moment he stepped foot inside the first outbuilding, he was overwhelmed by the pungent smell of the kennels and the soiled dogs kept inside them. But further inspection proved that this horrible first impression would be nothing compared to what they would soon see. An inspection of Building 1 revealed a total of 10 dogs kept in three small pens. Trash and debris, feces observed piled up next to the pens not much air circulating. In building two, inspectors observed the dogs were running loose, covered in feces, their fur severely matted. There were apparently play pens designed for infants being used to hold the dogs, but there were holes chewed through the fabric, which is why the dogs were not contained. It appears there was neither water nor food out for the dogs in building two, and inspectors believed it may have been like that for some time. The shed-like structure allegedly had one small one-inch circle for ventilation. In this structure, investigators counted 24 dogs. Those dogs that weren't running loose were found in plastic dog carriers, and investigators say it appeared they had been inside them for a substantial period of time. These dogs also had no water and appeared to have no access to water for some time. The inspection of Building 3 allegedly revealed even more horrors. Like the other buildings, inspectors reportedly found dogs running loose, feces and urine all over the floor, inadequate access to water. But in this structure, there were 110 dogs, and among those running around lay the bodies of dead dogs in varying states of decay. The investigating officer explained in the charging documents how he observed two deceased dogs skeletal remains, a deceased puppy that was being chewed on by the other dogs. One of the deceased dogs had been eaten by either another dog or by rats. And the rats were apparently all over the building, all around the perimeter of the structure and along the dog's cages. Animal Control estimates there were approximately 200 rats in this building that were swarming in and out of the dog's cages, as well as a number of dead rats throughout the building. And in the Murphy home, investigators found what they describe as the worst conditions. A member of animal control deemed the interior of the residence to be worse than building one, building two, and building three. 
When she was questioned during the inspection, Susan Murphy allegedly told investigators there were two female dogs and their litters, plus 14 additional dogs inside the residence at the time. A count of the animals revealed there were actually 166 dogs inside the house, either found running around, in cages, playpens, pet carriers, and in large Rubbermaid containers without tops on them. Investigators described the pet carriers, saying they looked as if they had not been cleaned in approximately nine months to a year. It took animal control 14 hours to remove a total of 310 dogs from the property. And as you may know from our past coverage of this story, all of the dogs that were rescued from that property in Eden, they were looked over by veterinarians and treated. These documents show that there were 26 dogs that apparently needed a higher level of care than the rest. According to the veterinarians who assessed them, the dogs appeared to have been sitting in their own feces and urine for a minimum of three to four months. One dog had to have its left eye removed, another one had to have its leg amputated, and eventually had to be euthanized. Now, David, the charging documents show that these veterinarians believe at least in the cases of these 26 dogs, that the conditions they were allegedly forced to live in resulted in unnecessary pain and suffering. Uh, truly difficult uh, details to hear. Now, if the Murphys are found guilty of animal cruelty, what kind of penalties could they be facing? Well, the crimes, they are misdemeanors, which means that if the Murphys are found guilty, they could face up to 90 days in jail, up to $1,000 in fines, or both. That might not seem like a lot, but that's her charge. And in this case, the charging documents outline the abuse of dozens of dogs. So, if convicted, that means that they are looking at a maximum of 21 years in prison. All right, it will be interesting to say the least to see how this all turns out. 47 ABC's Emily Lampa reporting live in studio with us. Now, the Murphys aren't only facing animal abuse and neglect charges. Investigators also have evidence which they believe proves the Murphys were running a puppy mill. And on that note, our live team coverage continues with 47 ABC's Lili Zhang, who is live at the Wicomico County Sheriff's Office. Lili. Thanks so much, David. As Emily stated, the couple is facing 168 charges altogether. That's 84 charges each for Susan and Robert Murphy. Now, at a press conference earlier today, county leaders spoke not only of the deplorable conditions that they allegedly found the dogs in back in April, but also what else needs to be done now in order to prevent this from ever happening again. We are certainly going to push for legislation that will prohibit anyone from ever possessing or caring for any animal uh, if they're convicted of these crimes. County leaders speaking openly about many of the details collected from a three-month-long investigation after more than 300 dogs were rescued from an Eden property in April. At a press conference Monday, Wicomico County Sheriff Mike Lewis described to media the horrific conditions Susan and Robert Murphy allegedly kept the dogs in. He said they have evidence to prove these dogs were being bred in inhumane conditions and being sold for profit, the very definition of a puppy mill. There was an inordinate amount of feces and urine in the residence. In many locations, you could not determine what type of flooring was in the home because of the urine and the feces that covered the entire residence. Both suspects facing 84 counts each of animal cruelty and failing to provide necessary care to the dogs. According to Sheriff Lewis, building this case against the Murphys was a partnership between the Wicomico County Humane Society, Wicomico County Sheriff's Office, plus the state's attorney offices between Wicomico County and Baltimore City. When 47 ABC asked about the frequency of kennel checking in the county, Humane Society Executive Director Aaron Balsamo told the media Monday they do checks on people almost daily. However, Balsamo says it was virtually unheard of to find a kennel like the one in Eden. And he admits they are investigating other kennels with possible connections to the Eden property. But he wouldn't go into specifics. As of Monday, these county leaders say almost every single dog rescued from the Murphys has been adopted. We're told 27 remain in care for treatment. While he would like to see stiffer penalties and enforce stricter regulations, Balsamo admits... We really need to take a hard look at what we have on the books right now and see where we can make changes that are going to be effective. Uh, we can't just have changes on the books just to have changes. We need to have effective changes if we're going to look at uh, doing anything legislatively. 
Now, according to Sheriff Mike Lewis, there is no official court date yet for either of the suspects. We're told that process in itself could take about 8 to 12 weeks to happen. Now, as we've reported in the past, there have been plenty of fundraising efforts for these dogs, and we're told that to date, there have been about $110,000 raised for the local Humane Society. David? All right, thank you, Lili. 47 ABC's Lili Zeng reporting live in Salisbury tonight. Now, if you at home would like to see that full press conference and the charging documents from this case, we have them both up on our website right now.